What the Portland Trailblazers have been doing in the fourth quarter in the last 10 to 12 games or so makes absolutely zero sense. Welcome back to another Ramble video. If you've never watched one of these videos, the edits are few, but the entertainment is high. Well, apparently, because you guys seem to have always enjoyed these types of videos, so if you haven't watched one of these, I basically just ramble about something regarding the Portland Trailblazers for about 10 to 15 minutes, stumble over my words, and don't really edit it out. It's a little different than the videos that I normally do. So today I'm going to be rambling about the Blazers' fourth quarter woes because they are extremely confusing and they make zero sense. I'm sure you thought the thumbnail of this video was some clickbait BS. I don't cuss on this channel. Clickbait BS bull you know what i'm saying but i promise it wasn't i'll explain it but first i gotta plug some of my own stuff believe in blazers podcast dropping later today talking about gp2 he's missed a few games so i've waited to put out this podcast but i talk with a warriors beat reporter or somebody that covers the warriors on the radio there in san francisco uh i talked to him about gp2 and what we should expect uh from him in a blazer uniform and then uh, later tonight i will have a game preview previewing the blazers heading into toronto and playing the raptors that's an early game tomorrow that's 12 30 p.m pacific time start time right in the middle of the final week of football so i'll probably be trying to watch both but i want to get that preview out tonight since that is a early game at tomorrow i forgot the preview for the last game I, I just I just forgot to to make it and uh, when the game was going on I was like oh yeah I was supposed to do a preview for this game because I do those things now and so so that was my bad but uh preview believe in blazers podcast in this video that's a triple whammy of content today so hopefully you enjoy anyway let's just jump into things I don't know why I keep holding these the, these are dryer balls and I've been holding them on streams I don't know. It's nice to have something in, in my hand that doesn't that doesn't sound right. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me let me just no. Anyway, um, so the Portland Trail, <laughs> so the Portland Trail Blazers in the last ten games in fourth quarters have the twenty fifth ranked net rating. It's a minus ten point three, which is absolutely terrible. And these bad fourth quarters have coincided with Blazers losing games that they should win at Golden State at minnesota at indiana they lost all these games but they were very competitive in them and now they're 19 and 19 take care of business in the fourth quarter 22 and 16 and there was games earlier in the season which the blazers absolutely choked in the fourth quarter and that i mean the difference of these games are a couple possessions and they're the difference between maybe being 23 and 15 and 19 and 19 and the difference in four games is the difference between being like ninth looking like a playing team and being in the battle for home court advantage right now because the west is wide open and there's a ton of parity so it's extremely frustrating for some blazer fans but uh it makes even less sense but there's reason for optimism all right and i'm gonna get into that first we just gotta look at the stats because the stats don't lie 25th net rating in fourth quarters in the last 10 games very very bad but a lot of people just assume, oh, this team can't defend, this team can't defend. Well, it's been in, it's been on the offensive end, which makes no sense for this Portland Trailblazers team that has always sucked defensively and always had a good offense. And now you got Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant, Yusuf Nurkic, Josh Hart starting lineup. That uh, should be a good offense. And we've seen that be a really good offense at times this year. However, lately in fourth quarters, it's been absolutely terrible. In the last six and a half minutes last night against the Indiana Pacers, the Blazers scored two points and missed their final 13 field goals. In the final five minutes or so at Golden State, which the Blazers choked a lead and lost by six, uh, the Blazers were one for their last nine from the field and had four turnovers. The stats are even more staggering when you look at offensive rating in the last 10 games in the fourth quarter. As the Blazers rank dead last, they have the worst fourth quarter offense in the last 10 games in the entire NBA, and it's not even close. As the Blazers' offensive rating in the fourth quarter in the last 10 is a whopping 94.3. 
94.3 the next closest team is golden state actually they have the second to worst fourth quarter offense lately but their offensive rating is 102.4 the blazers are 8.1 points worse than the next team the average team during this stretch the 15th ranked team is miami with an offensive rating of 115 portland's offense has been so drastically bad in the fourth quarters uh, in the last 10 games it's it's absolutely baffling because it makes no sense for this portland trailblazers roster construction to be this bad offensively late in games and here's the kicker in the last 10 games in fourth quarters portland has the second ranked defense doesn't make sense because this is a team that was supposed to struggle defensively and they have struggled defensively at times this year but they've actually been playing better defense it's just their offense is an absolute mess in fourth quarters and this was a team that was clutch earlier in the season jeremy grant hit a buzzer beater josh hart hit a buzzer beater and then you got damian lillard who we all know is extremely clutch i mean he's been struggling lately i'll talk a little bit about that but this makes absolutely no sense and now given these struggles a lot of blazer fans are jumping off the bandwagon and the sky is falling and it's doomsday uh, 4.0 this season i mean we it was doomsday after the preseason it was doomsday uh, in an earlier point this season at the end of november i guess it's doomsday 3.0 right now um but yeah basically the sky is falling and this team sucks again this team is cursed and blah 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 damian lillard is washed this is all the things that i'm hearing from blazer fans which i think is kind of absolutely ridiculous but blazer fans seem to uh more so than other fan bases seem to like <laughs> uh, the the peaks are higher and the lows are lower and i don't really understand why because when i see something like this i'm actually less concerned if it was the blazers being good offensively and being terrible defensively i would put more trust in that actually being something that would continue to be the case but when their defense is actually playing good and they have an insanely bad offense in fourth quarters i don't think that's going to continue because i rewatched the last 13 14 offensive possessions from last night's game where the blazers missed every shot and they got some decent shots. Fans got mad that Chauncey Billups said that they got some decent shots, but I watched Chauncey Billups' interview after I rewatched the last 13, 14 shots that they got. I watched it on stream with Eric. Eric agreed. They got some decent looks. They missed them. Sometimes that is actually the case. Now, uh, people don't want Chauncey saying it in a game where their offense is completely stagnant and they're turning the ball over and they're not running sets and they're not able to get up good shots. That's when it's infuriating when a coach just sits there and says, we just missed some shots or we got good shots and they didn't fall. When It's when teams actually don't get good shots is when I hate when a coach says that. When that's the case, when a team chokes a game in the fourth quarter and then the coach comes to the podium or comes up to the interview stage or whatever and says we just missed some shots that's when it's frustrating because no you're not getting good shots of course you're gonna miss shots that aren't good but if a team's actually getting good shots and they're not falling then a team's still getting good shots and they're not falling that's just the reality of the situation um that's the thing is you can't just rail on a coach for saying we got good shots and missed them because sometimes that is truly the case. I think that was the reality of the situation last night. Um, I don't really know what else Chauncey Billups could have done outside of maybe design a different set instead of isoing Jeremy Grant against Aaron Neesmith in, in the final six minutes. But it's like there's a possession where Jeremy Grant had a whole side of the floor against Aaron Neesmith and elected to shoot a face-up contested 15-footer that he missed. And it's like, that's a good matchup for Jeremy Grant to attack, right? Aaron Neesmith, smaller than him, playing the four. He's not a four. He's a shooting guard, small forward type of guy. Jeremy Grant just needs to put his head down, get to the rim. If he draws an extra defender, then he had Anthony Simons to kick two for an open three. And instead, he elects to shoot a mid-range fadeaway. And people can sit here and say, oh, bad Chauncey. That's an ISO possession. And look what shot we got. It's a bad shot. It's a 15-foot mid-range fadeaway. But Jeremy Grant just got to go downhill and make a play there. So when I rewatched this offense, at least yesterday, guys weren't making plays that should be making plays. Jeremy Grant has been phenomenal all year. Damian Lillard, I know people were saying he's washed, but he's still having a good season. Statistically, he's pretty close to his peak 
uh, seasons ever, and that's with this shooting slump that comes after he sprained his shooting wrist. So that could still be bothering him. I know I know he says he's 100%, but he's not going to say something's bothering him when it is. You know, he kept quiet about the core injury for the most part for six years, right? Uh, so I don't know if Dame's 100% healthy. Shooting wrist might be bothering him. We've seen him miss five free throws in the last two games and not shoot the three ball well either, which makes it even harder for him to get downhill and drive because he's not pulling the defense uh, away from the paint like he normally does. So, uh, you know, there's a, other things that go into this, but he's not making the same plays we're used to him making. Anthony Simons has been hit or miss lately shooting the ball. Jeremy Grant has been good, but in the fourth quarters, close in late game situations, he hasn't been as good as he's been earlier in games. He's had a couple phenomenal first halves and things like that. So uh, these guys are guys that you expect to make plays and to uh, generate good offense, better offense than an offense with an offensive rating of 100, not, e not even 100. I'm so used to saying 100 for offensive rating. You wouldn't expect these guys to lead an offense to an offensive rating of 94 in fourth quarters in the last 10 games. So that shows you that, A, these guys are underperforming. B, there is some blame on Chauncey. He has to figure out a way to get maybe a layup here or there, maybe get Yusuf Nurkic more involved, because I feel like Nurkic hasn't been involved enough in late-game offenses, where it's just like, okay, well, we're going to rely on our top three players, and they're not coming through. Some of it is uh, Dame... And Jeremy Grant not hitting Nurkic as a dump off option and then missing shots around the rim because there's a rim protector coming over. I think they need to do a better job of dumping it off to the big man when that rim protector slides over onto their drives. There's just a bunch of things that go into the Blazers offense being so bad in the fourth quarter recently that you can't blame any one player or person but too many Blazer fans sit here and try and always make it about one or two guys and they sit here and they chase a narrative and I went into last night's post game live stream if you're new to this channel we do post game live streams after every game covering the Portland Trail Blazers I went into last night's post game live stream just kind of baffled as to why the offense fell apart once again I kind of expected it at this point, but I was confused as to why. And I went into the postgame show saying, I want to rewatch the final 13, 14 possessions to get a good feel for it. Because I saw people sitting here saying, Chauncey Billups needs to be fired because look how bad our offense was the last six minutes of this game. Once again, the offense is terrible. It's Chauncey Billups' fault. Terry Stotts would have gotten us better offense down the stretch. And uh, I... I I didn't know. I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll go rewatch it and I'll, I'll try and get a better feel for if it's truly Chauncey Billups' fault or the player's fault. And after rewatching the last six and a half minutes of last night's game, I actually felt like it was less Chauncey Billups' fault than I thought it would be. And that's the thing is Dame's not making plays, Ant's not making plays. You throw them into the ISO heavy, pick and roll heavy stuff that the Blazers used to run under Terry Stotts and with how Dame's been playing late in games recently, it wouldn't be any better. And the defense wouldn't be that good. <laughs> the defense wouldn't be the uh, number two rated defense in fourth quarters in the last 10. So uh, overall, uh, this isn't really anything to do do with Chauncey at least last night there are some games where they do get stagnant and Chauncey needs to get them in more of a set offensive structure but I I kind of think at this point Chauncey's just trying to let them grow through some of the pains because as a Blazer fan we hang on every win and every loss uh, we won the game okay great we're gonna go into this post game live stream and we're gonna have a good time oh we lost the game okay well we want to hear Eric Brandt rant Right? That's how we kind of operate as fans. But as a coach, I feel like Chauncey Billups is sitting here looking at it like we need to learn how to play uh, at a freelance situations where it's not necessarily a set offensive structure, but guys know where to cut, where to set screens, what shots to look for, what reads to make, what passes to make, and that sort of thing. And the uh, good teams in the playoffs know how to play in those situations because in the playoffs, Teams will take away your sets. Teams will game plan for your sets. Teams will shut them down. And all of a sudden, your set falls apart. And you got to be able to create out of those sort of situations. And you got to be able to do more than just isolate in this, those sort of situations. That's what separates the good playoff offenses from the bad playoff offenses. That's why in the past, Portland has had good regular season offense. And then in the playoffs, their offense 
will fall apart. Dame will get taken away and is super ISO heavy and they don't know how to freelance. Sure, you could blame personnel for some of that, but the personnel is better this year. For whatever reason, though, they still are struggling at, at playing off of each other and playing in freelance. You can tell that this team is overthinking things and they have to think about where to cut and they're slow on their cuts on some of their off ball screens a lot of times they end up just standing around looking at the ball and uh, it's somebody having to isolate because there's no movement anywhere else and um, you just got to be able to make split second decisions when you don't have the ball in your hands uh, in regards to screening cutting making the right pass um, being able to be in the right spot off the ball, space the floor. If somebody drives on the opposite end of the court, sometimes you need to slide up from the corner to the wing in order for them to have a passing angle to you for a, for a skip, pass, kick out three. Stuff like that is what good teams do. The Blazers are struggling in regards to that, and in fourth quarters, it's even worse, and they tend to get sped up with the ball, and then off the ball, they slow down, and then it's just um, kind of a mess, but I don't think that's necessarily Chauncey's fault, because these guys got to learn how to play in those sort of situations and play that type of offensive ball if they want to have success in the playoffs, and uh, it's a little discouraging that there doesn't seem to be progress there, and maybe Chauncey's not coaching it right. I don't know. Sure, if you think, um, you know, Chauncey's not doing a good enough job coaching these guys on how to play off each other at a freelance situation, then that's a valid criticism. But going back to the criticism of Chauncey, the problem is a lot of the criticism isn't actually based on anything is what I've noticed. It's just Chauncey Phillips sucks. Look how bad this team is playing. He sucks. He should be fired. Uh, this, that. I hate his post-game press conference. There's actually people tweeting out his post-game press conference from yesterday, and it was only a four-minute press conference, and they were tweeting out, just looking at the title, saying, we got some good looks. Um, they tweeted out the video saying, when will he ever take responsibility? But in that press conference, if you watched it, and we watched it on stream, he literally said, I need to look in the mirror and I need to be better about certain things. He said that a couple of times. He took responsibility. But people want to criticize him so bad. They won't even watch the four-minute press conference, but they'll take the time to tweet out the thumbnail in the title of said press conference saying, when will we take responsibility? It makes no sense. I want people that criticize Chauncey Billups to actually bring up things that happen on the floor. Because if you're talking about things happening on the floor, then you're just analyzing basketball. And we can have a conversation about that because that's something we can both see and maybe we interpret it differently. But, you know, it's up for interpretation. It's something that you could see with your eyes. The problem is a lot of the criticism, I feel like, is chasing a specific narrative in regards to, you know, just he sucks. He should be fired. He's not as good as our previous coach. This or that. So... If you're going to criticize Chauncey Billups, make it about what's happening on the floor. Make it about the basketball that's being played specifically. It just seems so many people are chasing a narrative instead of talking about what's happening. It gets frustrating because then I'll, I'll rewatch 14, 15 possessions and I, I'm like, I don't understand why people are criticizing Chauncey, but they're not doing a good job of telling me why because they don't actually tell me why they're criticizing Chauncey. They're just criticizing. Yeah, make better arguments. If you're against Chauncey and you disagree with me, uh, make a good argument. Like... Uh, make it based on things specific plays that are happening on the court the problem is i bet you there's going to be five or six comments on this video saying that i'm wrong about chauncey and they're going to be criticizing chauncey but it's not going to be describing like specific things that are happening on the floor i'm not even going to i'm not even going to respond or really read those if that's not the case all right make your disagreements better make your criticisms better that's my challenge to anybody that wants to criticize Chauncey Billups. I got no problem with you criticizing him whatsoever. Just make your criticism better and actually explain to me why you're criticizing him. Anyway, yeah, I'm optimistic for this Blazer team because I don't think this offensive struggle in fourth quarters will continue. But the defensive end is promising. They've gotten better defensively. Adjusted defensive rating, they're like average. And um, adjusted defensive rating, I think, is a little bit better uh, than just plain D rating because it takes into account who you're playing. Like, if you're playing a bunch of tough teams, then you're not going to get docked as bad because, you know, it's hard to it's harder to slow down tough teams than it is to slow down tanking teams, obviously. So um, adjusted defensive rating, the Blazers recently have been around like 16th, 17th range. 
Um, and that's with the starting backcourt. And that's with a bench unit that's not good on either side of the ball. So, you know, you see the way the starters are able to play defense at the end of games. That's exactly what we wanted. That That's exactly what... Like, we didn't know if this team could have a stretch of 10, 12 games where they had the number one or number two defensive rating in the league in fourth quarters. Like, that's promising. That shows that they are capable of playing good crunch time defense. And we've seen stretches where these starters look good defensively. We didn't know if that was going to be the case. That was the big question mark going into this year. And then we all kind of assumed, okay, well, they're going to be a borderline top five offense and they're going to be just fine on the offensive end and we don't have to worry about it. Well, they have been far from that. That's been the issue. But that's the thing when people criticize this team. It's not based on anything specific. It's this team sucks or this team is cooked or uh, it's stuff like that. So in regards to the team and just in general, make your criticisms better. I think this team will be fine because I think they, I, 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 I don't think they're going to be this bad offensively in fourth quarters. It seems to have gotten mental for this team a little bit. Dame talked about it in his press conference last night, talking about how this team is uh, overthinking things and trying too hard, basically. I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but basically it just seems like it's a mental issue for this team right now. Late in games, putting too much pressure on themselves to win games. And with some home games coming up, 10 out of 11 uh, games at home after tomorrow's game against the Raptors, that should hopefully help them get mentally right. I also think it could be these starters have been playing heavy minutes all season long. That is a legitimate criticism of Chauncey Billups. He's been overplaying guys a little bit that um, given these heavy minute allotments that players have consistently seen, uh, that could be part of the reason why they're struggling late in fourth quarters, just because they're tired, they don't have the legs, um, and they're not mentally sharp because of how many minutes they're playing, while other teams are a little bit more rested and ratchet up the intensity at the end of games, Portland's kind of withering away, potentially due to due to heavy minutes, so if you want to criticize Chauncey for that, go ahead, I'm right there with you. On, on that sort of criticism. So, as the Blazers get a better bench, hopefully with GP2 being back and uh, maybe some trade deadline upgrades, Chauncey won't feel the need to play these guys the heavy minutes they're playing and they should be fresher at the end of games. I think the bench issues kind of are related to the late game offensive issues that this team has been seeing. I think you'll see the offense get better late in games and if the defense can remain close to the level late in games, this should be a good late game team. And if this is a good late game team, it's a good NBA team because the Blazers have basically been in almost every game this year. They have so many close losses that they have a lead in the final five minutes in, but they can't figure it out lately. They cannot win a close game because of how bad their late game offense is. They can't buy a shot that it ends up be in a situation where, yeah, they're 19-19, but man, you you figured things out, and you're winning a lot of these games you're losing, and with how close the league is, that's a massive difference. So that's what I want to see from this team. That's why I'm not sitting here giving up on this team, because A, these offensive struggles make no sense given the talent that's on the floor offensively. B, um, you could see some improvements in regards to Chauncey maybe trying different things, or the team learning from these struggles, or, uh, you know, trade deadline upgrades, GP2 being able to play and take a little bit of the minutes burden off some of the starters. Uh, I, I think you'll see improvement there. So the, the defense is promising. Um, the offense is very confusing. But I think this Blazer team will be fine. And if not, I mean, I don't know. We'll get to find out. And that's part of the fun of being a fan is just seeing the process of trying to get this team good. And um, even if it continues to be a struggle, the storyline is intriguing at least. And it's it'll be interesting to see if they continue to struggle offensively like this. Um, because, uh, yeah, I, I just I just don't see that happening, though. Uh, I just don't see that happening. People saying Dame washed uh, and stuff like that. I mean, people got to chill in regards to shooting slumps. It's crazy how quickly people will give up on Damian Lillard after how good he's been for a decade for the Portland Trail Blazers. It's actually kind of sad. Um, actually, that kind of makes me more annoyed than any of the other takes that fans have had in this video. I mean, we've seen him have five-game shooting slumps in the past. It's just if he's 26 having a five-game shooting slump, then it's, oh, well, he's just in a shooting slump because he's 26, right? But since he's 32... Every single time he has a bad shooting game or a bad shooting stretch, it's going to be, he's washed, he's old, he's on the decline, blah, 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 blah. 
If he sucks for the rest of the regular season, then okay, you can make that point. But we're talking about like five or six games he struggles shooting the ball, which before this five or six game stretch, he was actually scoring at his highest clip ever on his highest efficiency ever. Out of any season. So stop overreacting to one or two or three or four or five games. It gets very, very tiresome as a guy that covers this team, man. I'm just being honest. Um, so, you know, uh, I love it when people disagree and bring good arguments to the table because then we can have a discussion. And honestly, I'm still trying to figure out everything about this basketball team. So if you have some insight that maybe I didn't realize and you can actually back it up with some logic, then I love that. Because I can learn more about this team with, with people that bring those sort of arguments to the table. So, um, basically, if you get anything from this video, it's that, uh, yeah, the Blazers suck in the fourth quarter uh, offensively for whatever reason. We already knew that. Like, they're insanely bad. Defensively, they have actually been really good late in games. And uh, the other thing to take away from this video is that uh, you should probably be a little bit more optimistic. Because it seems like every Blazer fan is down. But if you're going to have criticisms of this team or... Uh, things that you disagree with me or Eric with, just make your arguments a little bit better, make them a little bit more solid, make them based more so on specific things happening on the basketball court than just a specific narrative like this sucks, that sucks, everything sucks, and the sky is falling. Anyway, that's a wrap for this video. Believe in Blazers podcast coming up later tonight and uh, preview video also coming up later tonight. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy those. And until next time, I'm out of here. As always, peace out. Go Blazers.